I bow to the Almighty in my mind, speech and body. Vanakam, a quick recap. We are learning the Tamil language, which is one of the oldest languages in the world, left behind by our ancestors. We have started with the Erithikkal or the alphabets. And there are a total of 247 alphabets with unique symbols. They are classified into Mudal Erithikkal and Sarb Erithikkal. In the Mudal Erithikkal category, we have Uyir Erithikkal and Mei Erithikkal. Uh, in the Sarba Erithikkal category, there are 10 types and we will learn the two types, the Uyirma Erithikkal and the Aida Erithikkal. The Uyir Erithikkal are the vowels and they are 12 in number. And all the 12 Uyir Erithikkal arise in the throat area. And the air that comes out when we pronounce them are not obstructed by any of the natural instruments like the lips, the tongue, the teeth and the palate. Um, since we have seen all of this in the past uh, few videos, I am going a little fast here. A ah is the primordial sound of creation and also the first natural unobstructed sound from our mouth and all the other letters of all languages can be created by twisting the sound of A ah with our natural instruments. Um, we saw that Tamil ancestors made this A ah as their first Uyirathu and we saw how to write the Arithu. Today we will move on to the other Uyirathukkal. We saw that as we made the sound A, ah, the vibrations are coming from the throat. So we say that A ah is born in the throat area. So let's take this as the first area where the sound is born. Now while saying A, ah, let's press the corner of the tongue on the upper row of teeth like this. And, and we continue to make the A ah sound. And let's see what we get. Let's try this. Ah, e. Ah, e. So we get the sound E. Uh, if you notice, you'll see that you're not really obstructing the sound of A. Ah. We are channeling the air by giving a boundary in the middle of the mouth. So that's how we get an E. And this is how it looks. I will explain how to write this symbol after we have learned the theory behind the sounds. So now let's place this edit the E after A. Now let's see what happens when we make the sound to come from the front portion of the mouth. So now while saying A, we create a boundary in the front of the mouth like this. So we say A, U, A, U. We get the sound U and this is how it looks. So now we place this Erithu after the Erithu E. So now we have placed the three Erithu Kal in the Agara Varisai. If you can recall, the Agara Varisai or the Agara Adi is the order in which the Erithu Kal are arranged. So now we have placed the A, E and U in the Agara Varisai in accordance with the place of birth. Uh, starting with A in the back of the throat and E in the middle of the mouth and U in the front end of the mouth. Next. Now we can also stretch the sounds of these three erithikal for a little more time and three new erithikal can be created. For instance, if I stretch the sound of A, I get A. And by stretching the sound of E, I get E. And by stretching the sound of U, I get U. But now another question arises. How much time should we stretch the sound for? And to answer that, we learn a new concept called the Mathirai. Mathirai. Mathirai is a measure of time. Um, just as how we have seconds and minutes to measure time, Mathirai is also a measure of time. It is defined as a time taken to pronounce one edith. And roughly, one Mathirai is equal to the time it takes to blink our eye. So this is one Mathirai. Or it can also be defined as the time it takes to produce a clicking sound when we snap our fingers like this. This is one Mathirai. The A, E and U that we learned first is pronounced for one Mathirai. Um, so like this A, E, U. 
and like I said earlier, we can also stretch the sound of A, E and O to two Marti rays like this. A, E, O. And when we stretch the sound of A, E and O, we get the three new arithmetical. Now, the A, E and O with the one Marti ray sound are also called as the Kuril arithmetical or Kutra arithmetical. Kuril means short. The A, E and O with the two Matire sounds are also called as the Nedil Irithikal or Net Irithikal. Nedil means long. So now in the Agaradi, where do we place the Nedil Irithikal? Considering the similarity of sound to the Kuril Irithikal, it made sense to place the needle edith right beside its kuril partner. So now we place the A after A and the E after E and the U after U. So now we have learned the sixth arithmetical in the Agaradi which is placed in the following order. A, A, E, E, U, U. So I hope we understand the logic behind the ordering and the, the placement of the arithmetical in the arithmetical agaradi. Okay, next let's see how to write this. Let me also take my pen. Uh, we saw how to write the arith a. So for writing the nedal arith a, we start first with the kuril a. Uh, we start with a circle that goes clockwise and continue that to a semicircle and continue it to a sleeping line. And finish with the standing line. Now that's the arith a. To write the nedil a, just add a tail to the kuril a. So we start at the point where the sleeping line meets the standing line and draw a semicircle in the clockwise direction and continue to a small circle in the end. This is the nedil a. Once again, we start with a circle that goes clockwise and continue that to a semicircle. And continue that to a sleeping line and finish with a standing line. Now to write the needle A, we add a tail. So we start at the point where the sleeping line meets the standing line. And we draw a semicircle in the clockwise direction. And continue it to a small circle in the end. And this is the needle A. Next, let's see how to write the Kuril edit the E. Uh, to do that, we start with a small circle that goes clockwise. And just like A, we continue to make a semicircle. But now, instead of a sleeping line, uh, we continue the stroke to draw another semicircle. And now again, we continue to draw another semicircle that cuts the first semicircle and continue the stroke to make a curve that covers the small circle on top like a nice umbrella and finish off on the side. And that is the Kuril E. Uh, it looks like a nice ball of spaghetti, but it's really a bunch of connected semicircles. And with a little practice, you can do this nice and fast. Let's try this one more time. We start with a small circle that goes clockwise, just like the R. Continue that to make a semicircle. Now, instead of a sleeping line, you continue that to draw another semicircle. Continue that to draw another semicircle that cuts the first semicircle. Continue the stroke to make a curve that covers a small circle on top, like a nice umbrella and finish it off on the side and that is the Kuril Arith E. Now let's do the Nedil Arith E. <clears throat> this is very easy. We start with the standing line and take off your hand. Uh, we draw a sleeping line on top of it. Take off your hand and draw another standing line on the side. This looks like a nice house. You put one dot inside and one dot on the outside and that's the Nedil Arith E. Once again, we start with the standing line. Take off your hand, you make a sleeping line on it. Take off your hand, I draw another standing line and you put one dot on the inside and one dot on the outside. And that is the needle edit the E with two Mati rays. Um, next we move to the next edit, the, the Kuril edit the U. So we start with a small circle that goes clockwise just like the R. We continue the stroke to draw a semicircle like this and stretch it to a sleeping line and that's the Kuril U. This roughly looks like the number 2. Once again, we start the small circle that goes clockwise 
just like the R, we continue the stroke and draw a semicircle like this and stretch it to a sleeping line. <coughs> now, there is an interesting fact about this Erithu U. This is a sacred letter and it is used to represent the Hindu god Ganesha or Ganapati. Ganapati is a god represented with an elephant head with a large trunk and long ears. Uh, this god is a remover of obstacles and usually he is the first god to be worshipped by Hindus before the start of any activity. The first slide of our first session too was a prayer to Ganapati. He has four hands and is often shown holding various objects like the lotus, an axe, a hand gesture like this indicating blessing, it is also called as the Abhaya Mudra, a bowl of sweet dish called Kolkatai. Sometimes um, he is shown as holding a noose. There is plenty of information on what these symbols mean but we are not going to go into all of that. I will touch on one important fact alone. Ganapati is a symbol of the union of Shivam and Shakti. What is Shakti and Shivam? You see all the living and non-living objects around us experience three stages. The creation, maintenance and destruction. The world itself goes through these three phases in a cycle. Uh, there is a creation, the maintenance and the destruction. And this tells us that there is some energy, a kinetic energy that keeps this cycle going. And this is called as, this energy, kinetic energy is called as the Shakti. And it is depicted in the feminine form. Now the stored form of that energy or the potential energy is called as Shivam. And it is usually uh, shown in the masculine form. The symbol for Shivam is a line and the symbol for Shakti is a circle and when we join the circle and the line we get the Yeritu U. So this Yeritu U represents Ganapati who is a symbol of the union of Shivam and Shakti. Also this letter looks like the face of an elephant. The curve here re resembles the elephant's trunk. So this letter U is considered sacred. It is also called as a Pillayar Suri. And before writing anything, Hindus usually follow the practice of writing this Pillayar Suri on the top of the page at the beginning. Pillayar is another name for Ganapati or Ganesha. <coughs> so that's about the Ritu U. Now uh, we have seen how to write the Kuril U. Let's move to the Nidil Ritu U. To do that, we start with the Kuril U, which looks like the number 2. And on the sleeping line, we start a small circle that goes clockwise. You go up and make a semicircle. Again, you go up and make a smooth sleeping line. Now you take off your hand and add a standing line here. And this is the Nidil Eduthu U. Let's try this again. Uh, let's start with the Kuril U, which looks like the number 2 like this and on the sleeping line we start a small circle clockwise we go up and make a semicircle we go up and make a smooth sleeping line take off your hand and add a standing line here and this is the needle edit to o okay so today we have learned quite a bit um, we have learned the six weird article so far and we've also seen uh, why they are placed in this particular order in the Agarabai side. And we've also seen how to write them. The A, A, E, E and U, U. I encourage you to practice these at home. And we will finish off the session here. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you. Nandri Vanakkam.